What is a sure way to get stranded along the way? Just drive a Ford Model A. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Of course you don't get stranded with a Ford Model A. They don't even make it out of the driveway. In any case, how do you do? Really, when I bought my Ford Model A, I really did not think I was going to get into it this deep. I didn't even think I was going to get into Model A or old timers for that matter because I can remember seeing a video from his name is Jim Burton I think with his 1928 Ford Model A uh, blue color two door and I remember seeing that and that he instructed or at least demonstrated how a Ford Model A is driven and the way you shift it with the unsynchronized transmission and it is absolutely amazing the way that worked when I saw that for the first time and I thought why in the hell would you want to drive that? that? That's what I thought. I really did not want to drive it. Why that, that shifting pattern and everything and the way you got away? That was really strange to me. And then, of course, and then, of course, a friend of mine buys his very first Ford Model A. And, you know, the design, the looks of it, I think is absolutely beautiful. So I wanted to go along and we did. We did drive together. And at a certain point, he allowed me to drive it. And... I gotta say, it is so different, so very different than, than what it just appears on video. Driving an old-timer like this is a totally different experience. In any case, I want to do a bit of an overhaul on this distributor. This is the distributor that goes on a Ford Model A engine. This sits on top of the engine. This is the old one that came out of my old engine. My old engine is pretty much dead because there's a crack between cylinder 2 and 3. It's got sleeves in it and we pressure tested it and it still leaks so there's no point maybe with laser welding or some other techniques it can be fixed but for me with the money invested into it or the potential amount of money invested in it in order to get the engine running properly again with boring with honing new Babbitt or insert whatever you got in there it's not going to be worth the engine at this point the distributor, however, is still in good condition. The bushings need to come out. And we've got some bushings that need to be put in. So without blabbering on too much about totally nothing, first thing we need to do is take out the bushings. I also got a modern upper plate and lower plate. I got the original type as well. If you're interested in seeing building up, I want to do an original one. Probably, or maybe even go with the modern one. I'm not deciding yet. I want to rebuild them anyway. Apply them both. Here we got a new one. And when you insert the new shaft, actually, this one is not too bad. Well, we got a little bit of a yeah, we got play on it. If necessary, it could be surfaced and used as is if you don't have anything else. I just try to replace them. Keep them around just in case, but otherwise just, you know, use them for a different application where you can use this still. Otherwise, just chuck them out. Okay, we're going to press out the bushing because they're now good. That's the first bushing. Story of my life, too short.
Okay, we got new bushings in there and what should be the case right now is that this new upper shaft with the lubrication option in it should not fit. And that it does not. That is good because that means it's undersized. Meaning we can ream this to the right size where we have very little play and a very good bearing surface. So it doesn't grab on high spots, but that it grabs if possible, fully over. Okay, the shaft is just slightly under half an inch. So I need to look for a reamer that can do that about just under half an inch. And we're gonna try and get it as, pretty much as tight as we can get it. We want it to be, or at least what I wanna shoot for is that it runs with slightly of a drag. You do, I do not want it to be too loose. I want it to be with a slight drag because it's gonna be running in anyway and then it's gonna be getting oil. So I'd rather have it be a bit on the tight side, but definitely not too loose. Okay, starting off with a light pass where it just barely even touches it to make sure that we don't take off too much and just remove the high spots. And then we check again. And then we check the fit. Still not, that's fine. Finally, they're starting to go in and tight. Just making my way there. It's not, no rush unless you have a reamer that is specifically set to these. In these final stages, I do not adjust the reamer anymore. I just do it with another pass that's gonna remove some material again until it is enough. Because if I now adjust the reamer, likely I'm going to overshoot it. We got that sorted and what I can see on the inside is that the bushings, they have a fully clean pattern in it. Meaning that the entire surface has been reamed that, the, that I don't have any spots in there that have not been reamed. So once it wears, it's gonna push down that direction. Now it's nice and clean. So we have a full bearing surface. I would like to apply the older style of lower plate in this distributor. And that's what we got here, the one with the wire. Seems to be in okay condition. I want to look at this. This is also nice and thick metal, or rather thick, not overly thin. And what we want to check for is that there is no continuity between the two plates, that it's not shorted out on the rivets. And by the looks of it, it should not, but we're going to check that anyway. All right, so that's good. This lower plate is good and ready to be applied because if this one is shorted out, rather than trying to replace it, oh sorry, if this one is shorted out, rather than trying to fix it, simply replace it. They're not that expensive, just replace it. If it's a new one and it comes out shorted, send it straight back to the manufacturer or to the supplier because then it's no good. So make sure you keep your receipt and pretty much always check every new bit of equipment or parts that you get, check it out. And if it's good, then you can keep it. If it's not good, you can send it back. I'm going to apply this more 
for fuck's sake. I'm going to apply this older style upper plate and I got a point here that is made by Ford. Still in usable condition, so I don't see why to not use that. In terms of play, it's not too bad. This is for the adjustment of the points. I'm not going to do them too tight yet because this everything needs to be adjusted still when everything is put together. So putting them in too tight doesn't really help. Just hold on for a minute there. We're in the future now and I goofed up. If you look at this points block, this point block needs to be turned around. So I'm going to take that out. Okay, so now it's the right way around. If we could just pretend that it's the right way around in the rest of the video, that would be very much appreciated. Thank you very much. Whilst we're at it, I want to have a brief look at this new distributor body. I don't know who made this, maybe through Snyder's or whoever makes this. And I would like to test it and put my shaft in it. Here's a new shaft. And listen to this. That's new. If you ask me, this is a bit on the loose side. So just a tip and listen to this when I bring it close to the camera. That's play on a shaft and the bushing. Same with this side. I'll suffer through it as is, but if, if it were me, I would much rather have them be tighter than this. In any case, I got more components for it. We can build up a new distributed body completely with modern points, with a modern plate, upper plate, and a modern bottom plate. I want to try it out and see how that functions, if it's any good and if it's junk. Okay, I tested it. I want to know how this stuff works and I want to know how it works on the car. Not a whole lot of movement and when I look at the height, so the center of the point to the center of the other point, that will be fine. There are types where they don't line up and the only way to fix that if you're going to go with this setup is to put shims, whatever, or whatever you want to place there so everything lines up because you do not want too much of a difference between them. Some you will be able to get away with but it is better if everything lines out. Okay, we got full travel, then we are in the position to install a swing. It's probably even better to put on the distributor cam and shaft. We need to work on that as well, because what needs to be done is it needs to be installed. It needs a ring here, and then whatever end play we have at the bottom, that needs to be taken out. And so we have, this is a 15 thousandths ring washer. That needs to be installed, yeah. We then have the distributor shaft. So this needs to go over here and it needs to be tight. It needs to be set in such a way that we take out every bit of slop that's in there. That is probably going to be on the tight side. From what I can see, maybe we can get away with it. You don't want it to be too tight. 
That's no good. I've cleaned the bottom up a little bit, get it a bit flatter, and now I should be far enough that I can get it to be there. I want it to be rotated, like so, there we go. Now that washer needs to be freed up a little bit, because it's going to be tied in the beginning and then it gets, gets easier, otherwise it's just going to be loose anyway. I can turn it with my hand, it is tight, but that is to be expected. I will take it apart once more before uh, we do any final adjustment. I just want it to be there for now that I know that this is going to be the adjustment. Then now we're going to apply a cam. And we can see that the points opening is way too much because I can spin the cam and it doesn't push the point, so it needs to come down much further. And also look what the alignment is. Now this alignment is fine. And they make sure that they're clean, they are, and they hit nice and flat. I wouldn't worry too much about any of that dust coming out of it because I'm going, I am going to take it apart once more before I do the final assembly because I'm just adjusting everything until it fits right, then take it out, clean it, then put it back together knowing that it is right. Then we need to check if we have a 20 thousandths or so or about half a millimeter of, of a gap. Then we got something else that is interesting. We're going to have to install the condenser. Or at least uh, I want to test out the condenser. The SP version supposedly short proof. If they actually are like that, no idea. But we'll, uh, we'll see and I'm going to test if these are actually any good. Um, otherwise it's a bit of a blind shot. Okay, do they actually work? Um, here we got a testing apparatus that we can actually test these ones out, that they actually work. It's a good bright spark. So we can install, it's gonna go right here in the distributor, the condenser. Now this one, because it's already screwed in, now you have a little bit of a play in that, that will help you with line out with this hole. So then this one is finished to be able to go onto a Ford Model A engine. However, before putting it in there, if you have an apparatus for it, I would recommend you to test it out before actually putting it on the car. That saves you a lot of headache. So that's what we're going to do with the new cam and everything. We're going to install it. I may polish the cam on there. That's always a good idea to keep everything polished nice and smooth so if everything runs in nicely. But what we're going to do now <laughs> is put it on the testing apparatus and see if it fires within the 90 degree intervals and if it does it correctly and it is, that it is not shorted out. It should not be because we tested the components and if it is good then we know that this one is good and ready to go onto a Model A. That's what I would like to do in a different video where we simply swap out the distributors because I got one in there right now. Swap it out, 
time it, and then see how it runs. It will probably, for fuck's sake, it would probably be interesting for some of you to see the timing on a Model A, even though timing a Model A is not as difficult as it seems. There are keys, there are things for it, but it's even more interesting to just look at the cam, uh, the rotor cap, and to look at the contact point. Of course, a light and everything would work as well, but if you don't have that with you, it's probably better if you can do it by, by hearing and if you can do it by what position the rotor cap is in. If that's in the right place, then you can easily just push it a bit forward or pull it a bit backward and get it a bit earlier or a bit later to get it right on time. Even though I'm not a Model A mechanic, uh, far from it, I don't even have a mechanic background. I've never done any type of mechanical work or well, hand crank blowers on blacksmith forges and stuff like that, little steam engines, but cars, this is a totally different world for me. Here's the rebuilt distributor. I'm gonna take out this new one and we're gonna place the old one back and see if we can time it and if the engine runs well. I have timed the engine that it is on top dead center on cylinder number one. So I can take this back out and we can take out the old distributor. Now that everything is out of the way, this should come out and that it does under tension. So I gotta put the camera down and take it out and I'll put in the new one. There we go, there was the cam. Is it seating? No, not yet. There we go, now it's seated. I have timed it, it should be in the right place. Everything is hooked back up. Gotta check I don't leave any tools behind and then it's time to start up the engine and see if it wants to run or if I need to do any adjustments. But by now, it should be able to start running. Assuming that the timing and everything is right. And there she goes. All right, let's take it for a short spin in the countryside here. I hope you enjoyed watching the video and look forward to seeing you on the next one.